This is how Libyans chose to express their anger over the growing lawlessness in their country. They displayed the national flag on the buildings as part of a campaign against the increasing control that militias exert over their lives. The mood of euphoria that followed the revolution has changed to a deep sense of frustration. The recent brief detention of the Prime Minister proved the instability of the government as a whole. Even parliamentary and government officials admit they're not in control of the country. What are people to make of that? Our top priority is security. We don't care who is in power. Libyans are struggling to rebuild their fractured country. Economic and political reforms have proceeded very slowly, two years after the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi. And this latest incident has forced many of them to question, if the prime minister cannot protect himself, how can he protect the country? The prime minister Ali Zidane, elected only last year, was kidnapped at gunpoint in Tripoli and held for several hours by militiamen. It is the latest evidence of the anarchy that prevails in the country. The government has made little progress in reintegrating the former rebels who overthrew Colonel Gaddafi into a united army and police force. Most of the militias refuse to disarm on the basis that politicians have not worked for the goals they fought for, justice, equality and economic prosperity. In the growing chaos, Libyans now cling to any sign of law and order, even just the sight of police cars on the streets. But the police admit they are powerless and themselves a target of militia attacks. We don't even have pistols or Kalashnikovs to defend ourselves against the militias, let alone heavy weapons. Reinstating basic security across Libya is a priority for both government and citizens alike. But many Libyans believe that the weakness of the government makes this goal far from certain. Ahmed Maher, BBC News, Tripoli.